Welcome everyone. Today is the day, April 22nd, 2022, Earth Day. And we have been planning for today for many months. Today is the day we are launching our multi-author book, Greener Data. And it's more than just a book. We hope it's the beginning of a global movement, a spark started by our data center and communications network industry and further flamed by the business community so together we can leave a meaningful legacy to our children, a greener earth that is sustainable for our children to call home. So how did greener data even come to fruition? Well, absolutely based on need. A recent International Energy Agency report stated that about two and a half percent of global energy is consumed by data centers and data networks. And this number expected to quickly rise with global energy used by data centers alone to increase to eight to 10 percent by 2030. That's a staggering number and a staggering increase. And as a person who has spent her career promoting data centers and data networks, I do, I, I feel responsible. I also recognize that I have many smart friends who are each tackling this great challenge in their own companies and in their own countries. So the question became, what if, what if we could break down these silos, our company lines, our country boundaries, and instead consider ourselves citizens of earth, sharing our approaches for others to seek inspiration and commit to getting greener in their own businesses, facilities, and technologies. Out of this question, Greener Data was born. This book includes insights and real world examples from 24 industry thought leaders located around the world, from Ireland to Finland, to Hong Kong, to middle America. We have circled the world and included nearly every time zone and every layer of our critical network infrastructure to find answers to a complicated question. How can we get our data greener today and together? And to be sure, time is ticking, guys. JSA did a call out for thought leaders to contribute a chapter back in December 2021, short time ago. And we were so honored that in that one month, we were able to confirm the roster and our authors had then six weeks to write and refine their chapters. So very timely information. And here it is today, Earth Day. This is now. This is happening now. And now is necessary. Collective action needs to happen now. And action through a multi-pronged inclusive approach, including getting to carbon neutrality, enhancing biodiversity, harnessing the power in people and resource management, leveraging hardware and software innovation, investing in sustainable projects, facilities, partners, and ensuring there's universal and impactful measurement and transparency. In short, turning alarming predictions around and into opportunities, positive collective action, and even as several of our authors cited in their chapters, potential revenue. This is Greener Data. I am Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA. My team and I came up with the concept of this book on this timely necessity, and we've been really honored to work with these authors, refining their chapters, and of course, with the help of our publishing house, Soul Excellence Publishing, led by our fabulous Kaylee O'Keefe. Kaylee. Thank you, Jamie, and happy launch day. It's so exciting that Greener Data is now out in the world. The book is available on Amazon in digital version and print. And I'm really excited to share that all book proceeds will be going to Direct Relief, Ukraine Relief, an organization that this community of authors has decided is super timely and super worthy to receive proceeds from this movement. So super excited to be here and uh, can't wait for all of you to read this incredible book. Uh, thanks, Kaylee. All right, guys. So without further ado, you don't want to hear from us. You want to hear from our fabulous contributing authors of Greener Data. So let's start with my friend, Philip Marangella, CMO of Edge Connects. Philip? Yeah, thanks, Jamie. I mean, um, I think you summed it up best, right? Um, and, and um, you know, as the chief marketing officer at Edge Connects, um, this is both a personal and a, a corporate um, uh, initiative um, that, that is uh, near and dear to, to, to our hearts and our efforts as a company. 
and what I think is fantastic about the book that you're doing here is is along with all these illustrious colleagues that that you have that that are authors we are just a small sample of of the thousands in the data center and telecom industry and the hundreds of companies that are all working collaboratively collaboratively towards a greener data right and a greener uh, data infrastructure um, and the beauty is there isn't competition, right? We're all in this together and we all have our unique perspectives. And what we're trying to do here is share those and be very transparent and open and collaborative on how we as a industry, um, as individuals, as a community can, can be greener, can be and solve for the challenges that are becoming more critical each and every day. Thank you. So, Thank you for, for allowing me to be a uh, part of this fantastic endeavor. Really appreciate it. Thank you. We are honored. Kim? Hello, um, I'm Kim Gunnels, Chief Commercial Officer and co-founder of Ficolo, based out of Finland. Uh, so we are leading um, Colo in Finland and the only climate neutral certified uh, Colo in Finland. I think it's great to come together across the globe for this uh, fantastic initiative, this movement, and um, share some of the uh, insights that we had on uh, the way to climate neutrality and our thoughts on going beyond. Mm. Because getting to climate neutral is a challenge that we share with, uh, with many, many data centers most data center players nowadays have, uh, have a vision of becoming climate neutral. Now we're already there. So we're thinking about the next steps. Uh, what does it look like to become carbon negative? Uh, the challenges are quite different because being carbon negative, you move from minimizing your footprint to kind of maximizing your handprint, which means helping um, customers, stakeholders to, uh, to improve. Yeah. Thank you. I love that chapter reference too. Uh, thank you. Vicki? Thanks, Jamie. I, I think one of the most critical things that we each can do right now is really get an understanding of what our personal impact is on carbon emissions. And when we look at and study data, we really see uh, the, the potential impact that we have every day just through every interaction we have, whether it's a computer or a telephone, it all involves data. And as CEO of the Green Building Initiative, uh, we worked with our chapter to really connect the dots between the tipping point that we're in with environmental social governance and investors being very focused on uh, sustainability, health and wellness and transparency to net zero carbon emissions in the critical state that we're in with trying to get a handle on that and reduce impacts from climate, as well as the intersection with uh, green building certification and how data centers can really uh, take steps to sew that all up into one integrated strategy. So I think it's, it's great timing, it's critical timing and truly a tipping point for all of us to be focused on this one effort. Brilliant, well said. Michael. Thanks, Jamie. I really enjoyed being part of this uh, initiative and I'm looking forward to reading everybody else's chapters. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of I Am Data Centers. I Am Data Centers is, will be sort of the culmination of my career in the data center industry. We factory build modular data centers employing some very uber efficient um, uh, means and methods throughout our both our products and, 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 and processes. And then we also want to operate a, um, a growing portfolio of our own data centers, uh, primarily for the co-location and IT managed services businesses. And um, my, my chapter included um, a bit of a laundry list of initiatives that we employ and, 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 uh, and reasons that I feel like factory building is far superior than, than traditional bricks and mortar type of construction. Uh, but all, and also initiatives that can be employed for, um, you know, how to how to improve the energy efficiency and reduce carbon footprint of, of bricks and mortar and, and traditional data centers. But I delved a little bit into sort of the the sense that I had of the interconnectedness of everybody, 
how how incredibly interdependent we are, and um, and and why you know this climate initiative is so timely, so absolutely necessary. Um, gosh, and um, so I, I I wanted to delve a little bit into these some of the philosophical underpinnings of why I'm doing what I'm doing and why our company is so purpose driven. And even, even to the extent when we set up the company, we did an automatic carve out of 5% of corporate profits for uh, to go directly to environmental activism and, um, and a number of you know, local community uh, initiatives that we have as well, uh, just, to, just to be better uh, neighbors on the ESG side, so forth and so on. So thanks again for the opportunity. And I'm really looking forward to reading everybody else's chapters. Thanks, Mike. Dean? Uh, thanks, Jamie. Uh, my name is Dean Nelson. I'm the chairman and founder of Infrastructure Masons. We're a professional association uh, uniting the builders of the digital age, literally the people on this call, the authors in this book, and, and hundreds of thousands of people around the world. It's, it's pretty incredible. As I believe everyone knows, the world has grown dependent on digital infrastructure. This call is an example of that. It is part of almost everything in our lives from health and fitness to social media, volunteerism platforms, agriculture, and almost every business function on the planet. It supports trillions of transactions and billions worth of commerce every day, and it's only growing. My article tries to help us define what the industry is and its size. And the reason is to give us a starting point to measure our progress. If the world's consumption of digital infrastructure translates to 2.4% of the global energy draw today, with a little over half the world's population online, and with the entry into the IoT age, what will that consumption be in the future? What we build, how we power it, how we as people consume it are all important parts of greener data. Embodied carbon must be measured in materials and products so we can drive that down. Carbon emissions must be measured in the power we consume to make that when we move those bits around as green as possible, regardless of where the data is generated or consumed. That demand is driven of course by the use of digital infrastructure by people and machines. Greener data to me means that we are looking at all aspects of the ecosystem and make sure we balance those factors. The digital infrastructure industry must be the stewards of building the right thing, the right way, at the right time to minimize the impact on the planet. Our asp aspiration is to get to the ultimate greener data, which I believe is gonna be net zero. Well so said. Yeah. that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, well said, absolutely. Oh, thank you so much, Jean. Mary? Hi, my name is Mary Allen. I'm Chief Content Officer at Insight as a Service. Uh, we're a group that has been working, thinking, and covering green IT for many, many years. Um, for this chapter, I've worked very closely with Francois Sterrin, who's the Chief Industrial Officer at OVH Cloud, and the team at OVH. Um, we spent a lot of time in our chapter exploring this idea of the carbon conundrum, and this is for cloud providers in particular. So the kind of acceleration of data use that Dean and others have focused on is potentially good news for the IT, or sorry, the data center industry, but it's not so good from a carbon perspective. So our, our focus was to talk in very practical terms about what we can do, but how you can actually expand your efforts and your initiatives. So at OVH Cloud, you know, the first um, area of concern and focus was the facilities and OVH Cloud developed a pretty revolutionary water cooling system that they've deployed at scale. The next step was to move into the IT infrastructure through better lifecycle management. And finally, today, they're really focusing on um, drawing in a broader community of stakeholders to try and solve some of these challenges. So that includes things like um, holding and requiring greater accountability from upstream partners, but also providing clients and customers with the kind of information that they need from their data center providers to help them improve their own carbon footprint. So <clears throat> it's really, the chapter is all about broadening the initiatives, expanding the initiatives and broadening the group of stakeholders that can be um, aligned in this movement or in this initiative. 
And that's why we were so happy to be able to work with you, Jamie, because I see the book as really um, wonderful educational outreach to help us all work harder to help the planet. Thank you, Mary. Well said. Uh, Sean? Hi, I'm Sean Farney, a Director of Marketing for Kohler Data Centers. I'm, uh, I'm a self-professed digital nerd who has uh, built and run every part of the data center ecosystem over the last 20 plus years. And I'm happy to be here because I love the space, uh, the, the amazing engineering involved and all the technology that goes into data centers, uh, and especially the passion of all the brilliant people um, that we're here with today and, and will hopefully um, cons consume this important book. Uh, and, and I'm honored to participate in this endeavor uh, and inspired by the combined efforts of all of us digital infrastructure doers and influencers to answer this, this tough sustainability imperative. Uh, and, and finally, I'm really excited along with my Kohler author colleagues to share perspectives on, on both the revolutionary approaches to data center greener data, uh, radical new technologies like hydrogen fuel cells and grid scale batteries and perhaps even private nuclear uh, someday, um, as well as the evolutionary approaches um, to, to this sustainability imperative, uh, using existing reliable technologies and products, um, but continuously evolving them uh, to reduce carbon impact. A great example uh, is alternative fuels like HVO, um, or optimizing operations, green operations, sustainable operations, doing things with the way you run a data center to um, have a lesser impact, or uh, modifying engine technology, for example, um, to, to, to have less testing involved at less load to reduce carbon emissions uh, and fuel consumption. So uh, again, excited to be here and, and happy to be able to share uh, that perspective with this uh, combined audience. Oh, well said, thank you, Sean. Patrick? Hey, Jamie, thank you very much. And thanks for including me with uh, this group of uh, uh, authors. Really excited to be part of this. Uh, you know, I'm with Patrick Gingrosso, by the way, with uh, MCFI, Mission Critical Facilities International. Uh, we focus a lot on delivering and developing uh, sustainable solutions from microgrids using fuel cells and solar to our data center designs that are pre-engineered and really develop, designed to shorten the timeframes and reduce carbon print and reduce the requirements for building the data center. Um, you know, I've been spent a lot of time doing fuel cells and having done this back in 2002, 2004, when green wasn't cool. Now it's cool and it's exciting to see it come back, right? Uh, but really doing this as part of the, as what you mentioned earlier about leaving something for our kids and are just, you know, doing it for when I was with my girls and we did White Princess. And the whole, one of the mottos that I always remember was when you visit a place, you always want to leave it better than when you found it. And I view that as the world we're visiting today, right? So, um, you know, my chapters around this is road to sustainability and really talking about what does it mean to be sustainable in the data center, not just energy efficiency and renewables, which is all great, but it's also about our building practices and using vendors and our community around us and ensuring that they're also following the sustainability goals that we're trying to get to. But part of that really is also around, um, you know, how do we monitor and measure it? And how do we, you know, compare it against a standard that we're all agree to? And right now that, that, it, that really doesn't exist. So how do we do that? How do we be transparent with the data and that how well we're doing against our goals to be sustainable? Well said. Thank you, Patrick. Wes? Hi, Jamie. Thanks for having me. I'm Wes Swenson, CEO of May sorry, Nova Data Centers. Uh, you know, for me, this is a great opportunity to explain through the written word a little bit about what I think we can do in the industry as data centers. Myself, I choose, design, and build these data centers and have a responsibility to do the best we can to have the lowest environmental impact from renewable energy to waterless cooling. But I think also the fact that this industry, the internet itself is about 31 years old. I think the opportunity is actually here. I mean, if you think about this in another hundred years, we have a big impact today on the market in environmental impact. I think we can actually be purveyors of change 
in this industry. And I really look at it as an opportunity to go from best practices to next practices. practices. So, you know, I'm really actually super positive about this book and the different stories, the insights from all of these experts in the industry. It's amazing. So I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. And we're thrilled to have you part of it. Lee? Thank you, Jamie. I'm Lee Kirby, chairman and co-founder of Salute Mission Critical. We run data centers worldwide, and in that, we think that we've got some best practices that are worth sharing because we can make an impact in the data centers we're in, but together we can all make the impact that we need for the climate. So we put those best practices in there. We put the what we think are commercially viable options because they do drive out PL impact and can be justified in your project budgeting and they drive out societal change. So if anybody can take what we've shared and learn from it, I think we can do more together. And that's what inspired me in this book was looking at my grandchildren, looking at the group of authors we have here. I think we can have an effect that lives on for generations and just very tickled to be a part of this. Thank you. Couldn't, couldn't appreciate you more, Lee. Thank you. Afner? Uh, hello, I'm uh, Avner Papuchado, CEO of uh, Server Farm, and uh, very happy to be part of it. Obviously, uh, I think this is very important. We have uh, uh, always been uh, very interested in, in uh, our, our environmental impact. We actually got into data centers because it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, equivalent to uh, driving your private car and then taking a bus, right? All our customers are sitting in one building that are much more efficient than the old uh, data closets of the past and the big uh, computers sitting by our legs of the past. And actually they're good leg warmers, but we may need to find another solution for this uh, problem. Uh, we, I, in our chapter, we concentrated a lot about the myth of green versus the reality of green. You know, the, 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 the lip service uh, versus what's real trying to encourage people to even take smaller steps, but take uh, real steps towards uh, truly getting as green as possible. And uh, we keep looking for these real steps and, uh, and, and the ability to make a, a real impact. And um, we believe in people. We got uh, this far, we're very far from uh, caves. We know that the stone age didn't end because uh, the world ran out of stones. So we believe the carbon age is going to end before we run out of uh, fossil fuels. So uh, here to help. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Nicole? Thanks so much, Jamie. Thanks for including us as part of this book. Uh, my co-author is Eric Kontag, who's president and trustee of the Suboptic Foundation. And I'm Nicole Staroselsky, and I am the lead researcher at the Suboptic Foundation and associate professor at NYU. In our chapter, we titled it uh, Call for Connective Thinking, and it grows out of a collaboration that Eric and I have been working on for several years. And in this chapter, we talked a lot about the work that we've been doing with the Suboptic Foundation, which is a charitable organization of the subsea cable industry. And we are deeply invested in a sustainable future for the subsea cable network, the network that carries almost 100% of transoceanic uh, internet traffic between continents. And we describe in the chapter how it's important to think about sustainability across the value chain from manufacturing to cable landing station development to the recycling of old cables. And one of the things that we kept wondering about as we were writing this chapter is how should we be thinking about sustainability as we build out digital infrastructure for the next generation? And one of the things that we propose in the chapter is that we need to focus not just on building connections for others, but on connective thinking itself, right? To bridge digital infrastructure uh, thinking to other sectors, other industrial sectors, economies, knowledge domains, to learn as much as we can and to share our knowledge. And so, for example, while there's been much work on data centers and sustainability, we're still charting these waters for subsea. Um, and this is in part because subsea is pretty environmentally friendly. They have little effect on the seafloor. They consume relatively little energy. But every part, every you know, industry needs to do their part to try to be more sustainable. And also, we can leverage the less uh, this the areas uh, that are more sustainable to make the network more sustainable as a whole. So we can take more cables and lay them to strategically placed data centers in order to unlock renewable energy resources. 
And we end our chapter with a call to action where we're calling for industry support and development of forward-looking programs that have sustainability at their core. And we're excited to join all of you in this process. Well said, thank you, Nicole. Bill. Thank you so much, Jamie. Uh, and I'm really excited to be able to contribute to this book and uh, be a part of this wonderful endeavor to create a greener planet for tomorrow. Um, I'm Bill Clayman. I'm the EVP of Digital Solutions over at this really cool company called Switch. And we believe in green. From the first time, from the first day that we opened the doors from, for our very first data center, we've always leveraged green and sustainable solutions. Everything from building effluent water pipelines to designing some of the world's largest behind the meter solar and battery arrays. We have to switch, build big, massive hyperscale data centers, but also make sure that they are environmentally friendly and created on a greener architecture. Now, I know that we are a connected society. We are truly driven by data. Just look at how, how much we're reliant on these tools today. But just because data runs the planet doesn't mean it should ruin the planet. And so we get to our chapter, Powering the Fourth Industrial Revolution. But my story and my chapter actually begins somewhere else, it begins in the country that I was born in uh, Kiev, Ukraine. And we talk about where I started, how I saw human ingenuity and industry creativity to come to where we are today. And so in my chapter, I discuss some of the amazing endeavors and inventions and things that I've seen in our industry. Everything from tidal turbines to massive solar projects to floating solar panels to nuclear power data centers. This is true human ingenuity and industry creativity. And we talk in this, in this chapter about creating a future that's truly more green, where we use our ingenuity and our creativity to actually power a much more sustainable future. So that's what I hope in reading this chapter and in seeing all of these other wonderful contributions that you, well, you take something away too, have a reflective thought and think about how you can make a small change today to make a bigger impact for a greener future tomorrow. Well said, well said. Karim. Thanks, Jamie. Um, I'm Karim Sheikh, uh, Chief Technology Officer at uh, Virtual Power Systems. I'm also a faculty member at uh, Carnegie Mellon University's uh, Integrated Innovation Institute. So before joining VPS uh, eight years ago, I was on the IT side, architecting and building software applications and deploying them in data centers without really much insight into what is happening on the facility side. So life is all good. But while I was with VPS, I really got to learn how far colos and facility, facilities teams have to go to keep their tenants and IT happy. And the, as a result, there's a lot of inefficiencies that have both economic as well as environmental impact. So when I got the opportunity to write a chapter for this book, I wanted to introduce the idea of an autonomous digital infrastructure, which is about software really playing a role in optimizing data center using the idea of software defined power. It's very similar to how IT benefited from virtualization or software defined compute many years ago, right? So my goal in, is to really explain how ADI maximizes the utilization of the power infrastructure in the data center, while also ensuring that we have full SLA compliance and there's economic benefit to both tenants and colos, but more importantly, there's a big benefit to the environment because we are able to fully utilize what we have built. So what I really hope out of this chapter is that uh, data center stakeholders, they're able to align with the calls to action that I mentioned in there, and I'm really looking forward to a strong adoption of software defined power in our industry over the next several years. And it should lead us to more greener data. Well said. Thank you. Brad? Thank you, Jamie. I'm Brad Meisner. I'm responsible for Kohler Power Systems data center focused products. Our chapter asks industry leaders to challenge some of their assumptions as it pertains to the evolutionary and revolutionary changes occurring in backup power for data centers. We discuss how on-site power generation is still the most reliable and lowest carbon footprint option for backing up a data center. With advancements like HVO fuels and revised maintenance plans, we are actually able to achieve near net zero carbon impact with traditional technologies. We also discuss promising future technologies like battery storage and fuel cells 
including when they might become viable in the future and what hurdles they're going to need to overcome in order to be viable. It has been an honor to collaborate with so many industry leaders to write and publish this book. It is a start to a long journey that all of us are going to need to continue to collaborate on, but I am really looking forward to it. Very well said. Thank you. Next, Melissa. Thank you, Jamie. I'm Melissa Reale Elliott. I handle digital and content marketing for Kohler's data center team. With the rise in data, as we all know, comes an increased need for reliable backup power sources to keep mission critical applications operating in the event of an inevitable power failure. Kohler is building upon over 100 years of generator technology to, and trying to lead the way in providing a sustainable backup power option. Our chapter is about the emerging technologies, the latest practices, everything that can be applied to achieve a more sustainable outcome. And I'm both excited and humbled to have contributed to this extremely impressive book alongside so many great leaders in the sector. And I, I look forward to the continued collaboration as we all try to power a better, greener future. And from Asia, we have Bram Singh. Bram? Hi everyone, I'm Bram Singh, the CEO here at BDX. We are a data center company with facilities in Nanjing, Guangzhou, Hong Kong, Singapore, and now Indonesia. Today is Earth Day, and I'm so excited about the book coming out, Greener Data, in which our chapter is called paving the path ahead. And I do hope you get to read it because it shows how we have used our automated platforms like 360 View to address some of the issues that have plagued the carbon, carbon trade since its inception with the Kyoto Protocol in 1997. A lot of these things, these, these issues continue to remain. And this chapter of ours shows how we are fighting to address them. So I look forward to you enjoying the book. Thank you. Well said, thank you. And now, Eric Kontag. Hi, my name is Eric Kontag. I'm the president and trustee of the Subotic Foundation. And let me start by saying, thank you, Jamie. What an amazing initiative to pull together industry leaders and write the greener data. You know, our world is going through an exponential growth of data. And over the next decade, we're going to see faster speeds. We're going to see 5G, IoTs, potentially the connected car, and other technologies that we have not even thought about. All of these require massive amounts of new builds and digital infrastructure. And as we build these systems, we need to think about energy. We need to think what can we do from the design, the construction, the implementation, and the operation to operate all these facilities in a greener way? What we want is connective thinking. We need to think about the facilities and services in a very different way than we have thought about before. This is a call of action for you to think about these things and act on these things by looking for greener sources of energy for our digital infrastructure, but at the same time, to think about how to remade our planet by removing greenhouse gases through sequestration and other technologies using nature-based solutions. What we want is a greener planet for ourselves, our kids, their kids, and humanity to live in in the decades and centuries to come. Thank you. And now from Ireland, Gary Connolly. Well, thank you, Jamie. Gary Connolly is my name and I'm founder of Hosts in Ireland. I'm really delighted to be part of this book. It's such fun. So as many of the other authors have already highlighted, it's about a greener data or a data center. And uh, energy is a big part of that story. And many of the other speakers will have talked about reusing uh, replacing uh, of electricity and energy. For me, I want to talk about something different, which is the challenge the world has right now on biodiversity. And more to the point, pollinators. Pollinators are those little bees, mostly, that uh, buzz around your garden and help to pollinate the flowers. 
And when one considers that these little bees, of which there are hundreds in the world, are really responsible for over 70% of our crops, then you can realize that if those lads disappear, we have a food challenge. So when it comes to data centers, right, um, data centers usually are built on large campuses. Usually, they have a lot of professional services people with small offices or large offices working on it. So collectively as a community, both in the community and around the community, if we can just make one small change to the design of those campuses, it can greatly help the uh, pollinators. So what we looked at was we, we decided in Host in Ireland, in Dublin, we tried to surround ourselves with people who actually knew the science. So we worked very closely with the National Biodiversity Data Centre and we asked them, what's the real challenge? And you'd be surprised. Stop cutting your grass. Imagine that. Just don't cut your grass. That's the first thing you can possibly do. Then when you're building out data centers, maybe take an area off the campus and just leave it. Do nothing. Just leave it. Never plant anything. Or if you're like ourselves and you want to actually actively uh, uh, make a difference, we have a, a pollinator plan for the data center industry. And that can be from your campus right the way through, as I said earlier, to a bee box, maybe in an engineer's office. And there, that's where the, the little bees live. But the health of the bees is a great indication of the health of society because we've got to give of ourselves. So therefore, one of the things that data center suppliers are often told or we hear is you're building a big dark box on the top of a hill and we don't know what you're doing. We don't see any containers going in or out. There's no people. It's very austere. It's very like Harry Potter. But actually, what we can do with the pollinators is we can reach out into the communities with orchards where we can actually look at the local tidy towns, the local hospices, the local schools, and help them to understand what we're doing by actually planting orchards in each and one of their uh, uh, facilities. Why orchards? Because orchards are the, one of the first things that flower early in spring. And most of these little bees, they sleep and hibernate in the winter and they wake up starving. So when they see this pollinator frenzy of a beautiful orchard, it's a wonderful thing to see. So I'm delighted to be involved in this uh, um, Greener Data uh, book. I'm looking at it from a slightly different angle. I think it's really important that we holistically join all of the dots. We reuse what we can. We replace what we can. We don't build if we don't have to. But I think the bees, the pollinators, and biodiversity is a way for us as a data center community to reach into the greater community and make a lasting difference. So Jamie and team, thank you so much. I hope that's been good enough for you. Thank you so much and goodbye. Well said, appreciate that. Up next, Bruce Lehrman. Well, thanks, Jamie. Appreciate being a part of this and I really appreciate you for taking the role and in leading this initiative and getting us all together as authors. I think it's going to have a spectacular impact on, you know, the 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 way the world sees us as data center operators and, and IT community. So thank you for that. My name is Bruce Lehrman. I'm the founder CEO for Involta, and we are a nationwide hybrid IT service provider, uh, servicing uh, mid large enterprise organizations uh, meeting their IT needs. And as you know, many others, um, we do consume a fair amount of uh, power. And, and seeing that continue to increase as we continue to grow. Um, you know, I, I am really excited about this project because, you know, personally and professionally, um, I have the opportunity to um, do little, little pieces every day to help make the world a greener future uh, from, from the work we do inside our organization to be more energy efficient. Um, you know, there's no silver bullet. And I think that that's one thing that we all need to recognize um, but there are things that you can do every day to make yourself um, better and greener. And, you know, even personally, you have a choice to make whether you, um, you know, put solar on your home or, you know, think about how you set your thermostat. I mean, the small things all add up over time. And I can tell you as an organization of Involta, you know, we've seen, you know, small decisions over the course of years have a huge impact in the energy consumption and the efficiency we have. And so I'm excited to share those with, with others and uh, really look forward to hearing um, feedback so that we can continue to, to make this world greener. Thank you. Well said, appreciate that. 
Thanks, Jamie. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this uh, project that's so important. Uh, I'm Roel Martinek. I'm the CEO of DataBank. Uh, DataBank is a, a national data center operator. And being a data center developer and operator, we consume you know, huge amounts of power on behalf of our customers. And ultimately, you know, I don't see uh, that changing into the future. In fact, uh, you know, probably there'll be a lot more data centers in the future. So I was excited to participate in the Greener Data Project because ultimately we have to figure out as an industry how to become more environmentally friendly. Uh, climate change is, is a real dynamic in my view. And ultimately uh, our industry needs to find a pathway to be able to still support our customers, but to do so in an environmentally friendly way. So in, our, in the chapter that uh, we, we put in the book, uh, you know, we kind of talk about some of the efforts that DataBank has implemented to reduce uh, our, um, our power consumption, to make our data centers more efficient and to utilize more greener uh, forces, uh, sources of, of power. Uh, so excited to share that with the wider community and um, we're supporting our goal from, uh, from a data bank, from a corporate perspective to be 100% uh, carbon neutral by 2030. So thanks again, Jamie, for uh, allowing me to participate and I'm sure the book's gonna be a great success. Well said, appreciate that. Thank you, Jamie, for organizing the Greener Data Book Initiative. Hi, I am Bob Painter, president of Ascent. As a data center operator and service provider, we welcome the opportunity to help our customers with their sustainability goals. In my chapter, Hidden in Plain Sight, I utilize my team's data center experience and our engineered focused operational approach to offer our readers simple low cost operational initiatives to help the cause today. Thank you. Well said. Thank you, authors and friends. And there you have it, viewers, a preview of Greener Data, not just a book, but a movement. Be part of the change. The paperback and digital versions of the books now available on Amazon. Go ahead and click below. Again, all proceeds of this book launch will benefit direct relief for Ukraine Relief Charity. After you give it a read, we also wanna hear from you. Let us know what you think. Please add your own inspirational actions, your innovations, your suggestions by using hashtag greener data in LinkedIn and Twitter. We really want you to be part of this conversation. Thanks for joining us on our very exciting virtual launch. Hope to see you at ITW this May, where we will toast in person. And until then, from us here at Greener Data, stay safe, think green, and happy networking. <laughs>